Dressing yourself for snowboarding is as much an expression of your style as it is a functional barrier between you and the elements. It's important to start with a really good base layer, and since this layer will be against your skin, it's important to choose fabrics that will breathe and wick away moisture quickly to keep you comfortable. Natural fibers like merino wool work best, but cotton is always a big no-no. Merino wool is expensive, but it offers superior breathability and it's naturally antimicrobial, which means you don't have to wash it after every use, and theoretically, you won't smell like a hobo. Synthetic blends that use polyester are the most common type of fabric used in first layers, as is this top and the bottom, and also these snowboarding socks. The material wicks well and is very breathable. It's also treated with antimicrobial finish to avoid the funk, but it's recommended that you wash it regularly as it doesn't repel the odor as well as those wool materials. It's possible to purchase a one-piece base layer, like this sweet ninja suit from Air Blaster. Not only does this ninja suit give you confidence to battle evil samurai, it will also keep the snow out of your skivvies if you take a karate chop and wipe out on the mountain. Next is your mid-layer. Consider this your insulation. A mid-layer is easy to remove if you begin to overheat, and it's easy to put back on if the weather takes a turn for the worse. Having a good mid-layer is more efficient, uh, definitely a better way to keep you warm than relying solely on the insulation from your jacket. Good mid-layering piece is lightweight fleece, like this one. When deciding on a pair of pants or jacket, you want to refer to their waterproof and breathability ratings. Those are listed by the manufacturer. Since fabrics today are so technical, it's easy to get confused by all the jargon. The key thing to remember is that two things are going to make you wet on the slopes. First, ambient moisture, the moisture in the air that can come in the form of snow, rain, or even fog. Second is internal moisture. This is the moisture that comes from sweat. It's very easy to make a jacket waterproof. A plastic sack is waterproof. What's hard is to make it waterproof and breathable. The breathability of a jacket or pair of pants is the measure of how much moisture vapor can escape from the jacket. This is measured in grams of water vapor that can pass through a square meter of fabric in the space of 24 hours. I bet you didn't know that. The higher the rating, the more breathable the fabric. Now different coatings and laminate layers add to the external weather protection of a garment, but the overall water resistance of the fabric itself is measured by suspending a tube of water over the fabric to determine how many millimeters of water pressure the fabric can withstand before the water begins to leak through. Again, a higher rating means a more waterproof fabric. Snowboard outerwear is, outerwear is all about fashion meeting function. Some people prefer working in this order. Find a style you like, then for look for colors and patterns that reflect your riding style or personality. These pants from Nikita have generous room in the hips and legs to allow for more movement. A must have for big air and spontaneous dance moves. There are plenty of pockets to stash whatever you need vent zips in the legs to regulate temperature, and gaiters built into the legs to keep snow out. A stylish snowboard jacket that fits well will not only increase your street cred, but will protect you from whatever mother nature can throw at you. A good snowboard jacket should not only keep you dry and warm, but it should have a spot to store media, a media device like your iPod, ventilation zips in the armpits, and a waist gaiter that keeps the snow out on deep powder days. Other features that are nice but not essential are wrist gaiters that extend into your gloves to keep the snow and cold out. This jacket has a really, really nice set of those. It has a nice set. Hoods are nice in really bad weather, but if you wear a helmet, then a hood isn't necessary. Some manufacturers have even begun to creating jackets and pants that zip into one another for a bomb-proof barrier against snow creeping into your undies. Ooh. You'll top off your outfit with a stylish beanie, and if you're prone to accidents or safety conscious, a helmet. Beanies are made from moisture wicking materials, be it wool or a synthetic blend. Choosing a beanie is more a matter of self-expression than function, and some of them have dingle balls. Yeah, it'll keep your head and ears warm, but it doesn't mean you can't have bunny ears if that's what you're into. Snowboard helmets are low profile, like a skate helmet, to reduce weight, and usually integrate some type of audio component, like headphones into the earpieces, like this helmet from Kate Capix. Wearing a helmet not only protects your melon, but they're great at keeping you warm and dry, even on stormy days. Gloves come in all manner of color and styles. Gloves take a beating, whether from constantly cleaning the snow out of your base plate when strapping in, or grabbing a sharp edge when you're poking out that method air. Look for gloves that add reinforced stitching in the palms and fingers. This will keep them from wearing out too quickly. And if you're prone to cold hands and fingers, you may want to go with a mitt. Mittens keep all the fingers together in one pocket where they can keep each other company and keep each other warm. Of course, you can always slip a hand warmer in for added heat. 
Unless the weather is absolutely sunny and warm, you shouldn't wear sunglasses when snowboarding because if you fall, sunglasses could cause injury to your face or eyes and you'll probably break them. Plus at high speeds, you'll get the teary eyes and it'll make it harder for you to see. I know, you're pretty extreme. Goggles are a fashion statement, just like your sunglasses, but you need the right color lens to help you see on bright sunny days, as well as dark and stormy ones. As a general rule, amber lenses are the most versatile of all the colors and are recommended for low light conditions and partly sunny days. Mirrored lenses are best for sunny days only. Yellow tint is the best for low light conditions only. Most goggles come with an amber colored lens, but other colors may be available.